Where are you going, Brain? Back to the cage to plan for tomorrow night. Why? What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The world's gone mad and the uh, New World Order is uh, well and truly underway um, with all this stupid rioting that's going on, uh, distracting the masses from the actual issue, which is the uh, vaccinations which are going to be forced upon all these sheep that are out there chanting BLM and giving the governments more and more of their freedoms by wrecking their local shops and places that they literally need. But it's kind of ridiculous. So take a look at this and uh, watch Trump as he does a speech uh, of space. Uh, it's quite hilarious. Also look at the uh, reactions on Buzz Aldrin. Thank you very much to our great Vice President and uh, also for the fantastic job that Mike has been doing. The future of American space leadership, we're going to lead again. It's been a long time. It's over 25 years. And uh, we're opening up, and we are going to be leading again like we've never led before. We're a nation of pioneers, and the next great American frontier is space. And we never completed. We started, but we never completed. We stopped. But now we start again. We have tremendous spirit. We're going to have tremendous spirit from the private sector, maybe in particular from the private sector. I'd like to extend a special welcome to an American hero who I've known, actually, for a long time, Buzz Aldrin, who is with us today. <laughs> known him a long time. Thank you also to astronauts Benjamin Drew, and David Wolf and former NASA flight director Gene Krantz for being with us and for working with us on exactly what we're doing today. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're also joined by our great Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, who spent the morning negotiating trade deals with South Korea. And as you know, that trade deal is coming due, and it actually came due a couple of weeks ago. And I think uh, we're going to make a good deal, right? We made some progress. I think so. That's what the word is. And good for both countries. Also, distinguished members of Congress are with us and leaders of several of America's great aerospace companies. Today, we're taking a crucial step to secure America's future in space by reviving the National Space Council after it has been dormant almost 25 years, if you can believe it. During the campaign, Vice President Pence promised that our administration, because Mike's very much into space, would revive the National Space Council. And with this executive order, we're keeping that promise. I feel very strongly about it. I felt strongly about it for a long time. I used to say, before doing what I did, I used to say, what happened? Why aren't we moving forward? Today's announcement sends a clear signal to the world that we are restoring America's proud legacy of leadership in space. Our Vice President cares very deeply about space policy. And for good reason, space exploration is not only essential to our character as a nation, but also our economy and our great nation's security. Our travels beyond the Earth propel scientific discoveries that improve our lives in countless ways here, right here at home, powering vast new industries, spurring incredible technology, and providing the space security we need to protect the American people. And security is going to be a very big factor with respect to space and space exploration. At some point in the future, we're going to look back and say, how did we do it without space? Wait, what? The Vice President how did we will do serve it without as the what? Council's chair. Space. Several space representatives of my administration will join him, including Secretaries of State, Defense, Commerce, Transportation, and Homeland Security. The Chairman of the great, I'll tell you, he's doing a fantastic job, always working, always fighting and winning. 
winning big against ISIS, that I can tell you, seeing what's happening there. The Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The National Security Advisor, NASA, and the Director of National Intelligence. The Council will also draw the expertise of other White House offices, as well as insights from scientists, innovators, and business leaders from across the country. We have many business leaders that want to be a big part of this. I think private — the privatization of certain aspects is going to be very — it's going to play a very crucial role, don't you think? They are truly into it. This coordination will be accomplished through an advisory group that is being convened by today's executive order, which I'll be signing in a minute. The National Space Council will be a central hub guiding space policy within the administration, and I will draw on it for advice and information and recommendations for action. And the Vice President, myself, and a few others are going to pick some private people to be on the board. I will say that's not easy because everybody wants to be on this board. People that you wouldn't have believed loved what we're doing so much. They want to be some of the most successful people in the world want to be on this board. The human soul yearns for discovery by unlocking the mysteries of the universe. We unlock truths within ourselves. That's true. Our journey into space will not only make us stronger and more prosperous, but will unite us behind grand ambitions and bring us all closer together. Wouldn't that be nice? Can you believe that space is going to do that? Now, this so is one of the reasons I put this well, video we'll up, because space. he said Every space launch is into going the skies to bring us another step forward together. A future Can you believe that? Space is going to do that. Against it's the vast big plan. expanse and, of our uh, common The next video humanity. you'll see Carol Rose in. Sometimes you have expose, to view things uh, from a distance NASA. in order to see the real truth. It is America's destiny to be at the forefront of humanity's eternal quest for knowledge and to be the leader amongst nations on our adventure into the great unknown. And I could say the great and very beautiful unknown. Nothing more beautiful. With the actions we're launching today, America will think big once again. Important words. Think big. Think big, yeah. yeah. Think, so think big, big, big budgets, big taxpayer money that's uh, going to leave your as a country. <laughs> we will inspire millions <coughs> of children to carry on this proud tradition of American space leadership, and they're excited, and to never stop wondering, hoping, and dreaming about what lies beyond the stars. So I just want to. Uh, tell you that we are now going to sign an executive order, and this is going to launch a whole new chapter for our great country. And people are very excited about it, and I can tell you I'm very excited about it. Thank you all very much. Good morning. My name is Carol Rosen. In 1974, after being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand, this is February. And we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries. Now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars 
on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. This is a system, he told me, that would never protect anyone. Even back then, he talked about suitcase bombs. He talked about chemical, viral, bacterial, bi biological warfare that these space-based weapons would never protect us against. And then he told me that, in fact, if you travel around the world, which I did after he died in 1977, I met with people in over 100 countries who were friends. They didn't want to build space-based weapons. I became a space and missile defense consultant. And I worked with people around the world. I became a, an advisor to the People's Republic of China. They don't want to build a space-based weapon system. And he told me back then that they didn't. He said, go to Russia. They're considered to be the enemy. I got on a plane by myself. When I got to Russia, I had a list of people that I had read out of the newspaper. Chernenko was in office then. He was the only one I didn't get a chance to meet. They introduced me to everyone when I got there. And when I got back, I said, oh, my Lord, this man is telling the truth. There are, is no threat. And I've been waiting until this day for 27 years. And I'm expecting the spin to happen because he also explained to me that in the, as a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, he said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons. And now we should expect the spin because he said part of the formula for the intelligence community is if they might have a weapon, then we have to consider that they do have these weapons. So now they do have these weapons, so now we have to build these weapon systems. And that's the formula, except that it's all based on a lie. And we have witnesses here today that have shown you that these extraterrestrial beings, that these craft that have come here are now not UFOs, they're identified flying objects. And we know that they have beings in them. And we have witnesses here who have told you that they can shut down our missile silos. They can stop a rocket going into space that's a test. We have witnesses here who have worked in the classified departments who have the courage to come forward here to support what Werner von Braun told me back in 1974 to 77. And I will testify before the Congress that when I founded the Institute for Security and Cooperation in Outer Space, which I shut down a few years ago because I didn't believe we had a chance with this huge, integrated around the world, complex weapon system, that we had any chance at all of transforming that war industry into a space industry that could provide benefits like Dr. Greer has said of global warming, we can end that situation of that problem. We can end the energy crisis. We can put, build now non-polluting technologies. Werner von Braun used to tell me that we could have cars back then that w drove around off the ground. He described this to me on beams so that we have no pollution on this planet. And we can solve the problems of the people that are urgent and potential and the other animals and the other cultures on Earth and in space. And we can end the arms race without dislocating the industry jobs, without disrupting the economy, by transforming, Werner von Braun told me, the war industry into a global cooperative space industry that will provide, he said, finally, more jobs and profits on this planet than during any hot or cold wartime, more products and services that can be applied directly to solving the problems of this planet, and we can have a whole planet now that lives on pe in peace on Earth with all the cultures on Earth and with all the extraterrestrial cultures in space. And these are words that Werner von Braun told me in 1974. And I will testify before the Congress under oath about everything I have said and more. Thank you.